So what happens when, you know, a young widow turns her personal grief, the death of her second husband, into a rallying cry for freedom, a rallying cry for independence? Now is this truly a genuine fight for liberation or is it simply a personal vendetta? Now this may sound like a plot from a movie but for Gabriela Silang of Ilocos, this was reality. In a time when women were expected to remain in the shadows, Gabriela Silang's incredible journey shattered those expectations and forever changed the course of Philippine history. Join me as we uncover the true story of La Generala Gabriela Silang, a fierce lady who rode out of the darkness to lead an uprising, a fierce uprising, and become a symbol of defiance against oppression, and a beacon of hope and empowerment that resonate through the ages. So who exactly was Gabriela Silang? Let's dig deeper and find out. Mabuhay! Or in Kapampangan, luwid kayo! Welcome to my channel, it's me Kirby Aralio, your friendly Pino historian. And if you are new to my channel, I make videos about our people's history, culture, and everything in between. So if you like learning about the Philippines, Southeast Asia, and beyond, don't forget to subscribe to my channel and hit the bell icon so you don't miss out on any of my upcoming videos. And of course, today's video is all about the life and the legacy of Gabriela Silang. So without further ado, let's begin! In the middle of the serene and lush landscapes of Ilocos, a tale of fierce resistance unfolds with Gabriela Carino Silang, born on March 19, 1731, in what is now Barangay Canyogan, Santa Ilocos Sur. She was a mestiza who rose as a monumental figure against Spanish colonial rule. In fact, many would refer to her as the great Joan of Arc of Ilocandia. Now unknown to many, Gabriela's mother was actually an indigenous Itneg, while her father was of mixed Spanish and Ilocano ancestry. But sadly, she was separated from her parents at an early age. Gabriela was raised by a priest who would later marry her off to a wealthy businessman, Tomas Milian, in 1751. But Tomas also died early in 1754. And then as fate would have it, in the year 1757, Gabriela Carino Viuda de Milian married Diego Silang a mixed Ilocano and Pangasinense who would later lead one of the most famous and fearless uprisings against the Spaniards in 1762, thus marking the beginning of an extraordinary path as Gabriela steps in to the forefront of a historic revolt against colonial oppression and injustices. This uprising under Diego's leadership rapidly expanded across northern Luzon, laying bare the grievances simmering against the Spaniards and the colonial government. And unknown to many, Gabriela's role in this revolt transcended that of Diego's mere wife. She was indeed a strategist, a key advisor, and a warrior at the forefront, deeply entwined in the revolt's fabric from its very inception. And even before Diego's assassination in 1763, Gabriela's contributions were significant and pivotal, and her ascension to leadership following his death underscores her critical role in the rebellion's continuation. As La Generala, she leads over 2,000 rebels embodying the fierce resistance against colonial rule. And Gabriela's early life led her to become a formidable leader and a symbol of resistance. Her story is not just a tale of bravery, but a reflection of a broader struggle for freedom and justice, echoing the resilience of the Ilocano people against centuries of colonialism. So in the year 1757, the threads of fate and destiny entwined Gabriela Carino with Diego Silang, forging a partnership destined to challenge the might of the Spanish Empire. Diego's uprising sparked in 1762, and it was a clarion call to the diverse people of Ilocos, Pangasinan, Abra, and Cagayan, urging them to rise up against centuries of exploitation. Under Diego Silang's leadership, the revolt quickly gained momentum, challenging the established order with a fervor that had not been seen before. But Gabriela's role transcended the widely accepted traditional confines of a supportive wife. She was at the heart of the revolution, and her strategic acumen and courage bolstered the rebellion's ranks. Indeed, her presence in strategic meetings and battle plans underscored her indispensable role. 
And as we unfold the shared journey of Gabriela and Diego Silang, we are not here to merely recount the union of two revolutionary hearts, but to deepen our understanding into the complexities of their struggle against colonialism. And it paints a picture of Gabriela not just as a figure behind a great man, but as a formidable leader in her own right, whose contributions were instrumental in sustaining the uprising long after Diego's assassination. In fact, her transformation from a strategic advisor to a frontline warrior and eventually to the revered La Generala of the Ilocos Uprising is a testament to her indomitable spirit and strategic genius. The flame of resistance once kindled by Diego Silang rapidly transformed into a blazing inferno that swept across the northern regions of the Philippines. And you know, if we actually look at historical maps, we can actually trace the revolt's expansion from Ilocos into the heartlands of Pangasinan, Abra, and Cagayan. With each battle, each skirmish marked the indelible spirit of a people united against a common foe. In fact, Gabriela Silang, emerging from the shadows of her husband Diego, became the embodiment of this indelible spirit, leading her forces with a strategic finesse that baffled the colonial powers. And if we think about it, the battles of this revolt reveal not just the geographical spread of the uprising, but also the strategic depth of Gabriela Silang and the rebellion. You know, from the Siege of Vigan to the Battles in Santa, the Ilocanos under Gabriela Silang's leadership demonstrated remarkable resilience and tactical acuity, challenging the very foundations of Spanish colonial rule in the region. And by looking at the Ilocos uprising, we can actually learn more about the broader struggle for liberation and dignity in the face of Western imperialism. The revolt of Diego Silang, fueled by the collective aspirations of the people, stands as a testament to the enduring quest for freedom and justice in Philippine history. Reflecting on Gabriela Silang's unique and incredible leadership, her unique and incredible legacy, and how it speaks to our present day challenges really makes me think. But I'm also curious about what you think. You know, what qualities do you value most in a leader? You know, especially during times of crisis, during times of struggles and change. Let me know what you think in the comments below. But for now, let's get back to our topic, back to the 1700s. The Silang Revolt of Ilocos, brimming with the promises of freedom and justice, faced its darkest hour in the early days of 1763, when Diego Silang fell victim to an assassin's bullet. And sadly, Diego's untimely demise, you know, engineered by those who were once considered as allies, plunged the movement into a momentary abyss of despair. Yet from the shadows of this tragedy emerged Gabriela Silang, embodying the resilience and the unyielding spirit of the Ilocano people. Indeed, the rise of Gabriela Silang as the leader of the revolt marked a pivotal moment in the history of the Philippines and the struggle against colonial rule. Gabriela, you know, undeterred by the loss of her beloved husband and the daunting tasks and challenges that lay before her assumed command and leadership with courage and strategic vision that breathed new life into the faltering rebellion. Recognizing the need for unity and a renewed offensive against the Spaniards, Gabriela Silang rallied the demoralized forces, instilling in them a sense of purpose and determination. And to be quite honest, and if we think about it, Gabriela's leadership during this critical phase was not just a response to Diego's tragic assassination, but more importantly, a testament to her own capabilities and resolve. The Battle of Santa in 1763 stands as a testament to Gabriela's military acumen, and under her command, the Ilocanos achieved a significant victory against the Spanish forces, a triumph that underscored her rightful place as the beloved and the fearless La Generala. And this battle, you know, happening in her own hometown, in the very place of her birth, was more than just a military engagement. It was a symbolic statement of the indomitable will of the Ilocanos and their refusal to be subdued by the yoke of colonialism and oppression. And so following Diego's tragic assassination, Gabriela Silang ascended, you know, from a strategic advisor to the undisputed leader of the uprising. Her leadership amid the adversity of Diego's assassination revitalized the rebellion, showing us the remarkable journey of a woman who defied the constraints of her time to lead her people in their quest for liberation, in their quest for freedom and justice. As the fierce and fearless La Generala Gabriela Silang became a beacon of hope and defiance, a beacon of empowerment, her legacy enduring as a symbol of courage in the face of overwhelming odds and in the face of injustice 
practices and expectation. And unknown to many, in the ever-evolving struggles against colonialism in the Philippines, the British occupation of Manila from 1762 to 1764 introduced new dimensions into the political and geographical dynamics of the islands. This event, you know, the British occupation and invasion of Manila, was part of a larger global conflict known as the Seven Years' War. The arrival of the British in the picture momentarily shifted the balance of power in the region, presenting both an opportunity and a challenge for the revolutionaries in the different parts of the Philippines. And in Ilocos with Gabriela Silang at the helm of the Ilocos Revolt found herself navigating these turbulent waters, with her resolve unshaken amidst the changing tides. The British presence in Manila was initially seen as a potential ally against the Spaniards. Yet the complexities of imperialism and colonial ambitions meant that the Filipino quest for liberation remained solely in the hands of the diverse people of the Philippines. Gabriela C Lang, understanding the precarious nature of this new dynamic, decided to press on with the rebellion, you know, with her strategic acumen guiding the resistance through these uncertain times. And the siege of Vigan, you know, a bold attempt to capture the colonial capital and stronghold in the Ilocos region, epitomized her commitment to the cause, to the liberation of her people. Though ultimately unsuccessful, this military endeavor highlighted the courage and the tenacity of Gabriela Silang and the Ilocano people. Their willingness to challenge the might of the Spanish Empire even in the face of formidable odds underscored the depth of their yearning for freedom. But sadly, Gabriela's capture and her subsequent execution on September 28, 1763 marked the culmination of Gabriela's heroic stand for liberty. You know, Gabriela's death was actually intended by the colonial authorities to quell the spirit of the rebellion. But unfortunately for them, instead of quelling the spirit of rebellion, the execution of Gabriela Silang immortalized her as a martyr for the cause, as a symbol of resistance, as a hero for liberation. Gabriela Silang's journey, you know, from a leader in the shadows to the forefront of the battlefield in the Ilocos Revolt, is an empowering narrative of sacrifice, of leadership, and the undying hope for genuine freedom and justice in our societies. Amidst the challenges of the British occupation, Gabriela Silang pressed on with the Ilocos Revolt, navigating through the complexities of global geopolitics with her unique strategic brilliance. And even though she was captured and later executed by the Spaniards, Gabriela's last stand for freedom was not just the closing chapter of the Silang Revolt in Ilocos, but more broadly, it was also a beacon for future generations, a lasting legacy inspiring many in the struggles against oppression and in the fight for liberation across the islands. And so, Gabriela Silang's legacy continues to inspire empowerment in the Philippines, transcending centuries to become a symbol of the unyielding courage against oppression, against exploitation. Gabriela Silang's leadership during the Ilocos Revolt and her ultimate sacrifice have cemented her place in history, not just as a revolutionary leader, but as an enduring icon in the fight for freedom and justice. And even though the Spaniards tried to humiliate and defame her, you know, by publicly hanging Gabriela Silang in front of the crowded plaza of Vigan, Gabriela's heroism and legacy remains powerful to this day. And in the spirit of Gabriela Silang's legacy, various organizations across the Philippines Philippines channel her revolutionary zeal into our current battles for justice and equality. You know, like advocating for women's rights and social justice, and remaining rooted in the principles that Gabriela Silang herself had fought for. And while this video focuses on Gabriela Silang's, you know, pivotal role in Philippine history, it is very important for us to acknowledge how her legacy influences contemporary movements, embodying the same courage and determination in tackling modern issues like gender inequality, violence, and political oppression. Indeed, Gabriela Silang's legacy, you know, her story is not confined to the pages of our books, to the pages of history. But more importantly, it lives on in the hearts and the actions of those who continue to challenge injustices. As we reflect on Gabriela Silang's legacy, you know, we see more than just a historical figure. In Gabriela, we see a beacon for ongoing struggles, you know, with her fierce spirit fueling the aspirations across generations in our collective struggle for a fair and just society. Gabriela Silang's memory, embodied by organizations like Gabriela, you know, named in her honor, reminds us of the 
continuous fight for our people's rights and justice in our communities, ensuring that her legacy remains vibrant and relevant in the modern era. And if you think about it, Gabriela Silang stands as a symbol of the potential within us to take action and effect change. Gabriela's legacy, you know, a reminder of the enduring power of resistance and collective action. Today in this day and age, may we honor and continue the legacy of Gabriela Silang. You know, by standing up against oppression, by standing up against exploitation. You know, by taking action towards achieving genuine peace and justice in our communities. Kasi nga, like I've mentioned before, without justice, there can really be no peace. And without peace, prosperity will never be a reality. So if you truly want to have this brighter future for our children, for our grandchildren, great-grandchildren, and so on, then we must really embody the lessons and the wisdom from the legacy of Gabriela Silang and many of our Bayanis. We must continue their fight to stand up for what is right. And if you want to deepen your understanding and knowledge about today's topic, check out my book and baliktad, and coloring book about the fierce women of early Southeast Asia, where you know you can learn more about dozens and dozens of fearless and fearsome women from the history and the oral traditions of the Philippines and Southeast Asia. And I also have an entire chapter just about Gabriela Silang. So if you want to learn more, check out my books in the links below. And I also want to give a special shout out to Gabriela Silang's 7th generation descendant, the one and only and multi-talented MJ Aracadio. Agyamanak MJ for all the hard work you're doing in uplifting our fellow Filipino Americans, especially in Hollywood. And of course, special shout out din to Bayani Art, especially to Robin Kitana Kirizan and Tata Ponzi Alfonso for creating this amazing children's book about Gabriela Silang. And actually, some of the art that you see in this video are actually from the pages of this children's book. And they also have other children's book about the other Bayanis in our history. So definitely check them out. I'm not, a, this is not a sponsored video, but I do love their work and I do support their amazing work. You know, I just love supporting our fellow Kababayans in uplifting the stories of our ancestors, of our people. So check out the links below to get copies of this books today. I mean, you know, order now so you can get your copies in the coming days. Anyways, if you like this video and learned a thing or two, why not join our growing community? Whether it's by becoming a patron on Patreon or a member of my YouTube channel, you're in for a treat. I mean, I'm in the midst of jazzing up the perks in these platforms, making it a perfect time to jump in and be part of something special, to be part of our growing community. And for those of you hungry for more, my books, coloring books, ebooks, and merch are waiting to take you on a deeper journey into the heart of our history and cultures, not just in the Philippines, but across Southeast Asia and beyond. And that is it for me today, but one last thing before I go, I just want to give a special thank you, a heartfelt thank you to all my patrons, subscribers, and viewers like you throughout these years. You know, your love and support is truly the backbone of this channel. Kaya naman maraming maraming salamat po, or in kabampangan, dakal pong salamat, kaya kongan, and in iloko, agyaman ako nai. See you next time, or in Tagalog kita kits, and in kabampangan, mikitiks, and in binisaya, kita aita.